runs back through this shaft to the pulley. This is what, just estimate it, six, six inch. It runs up to a, I don't know, three inch. And this thing, I don't know what the stats are on it anymore. It's hard to tell. Let me see. I think it says three three thousand four hundred and fifty RPMs. Okay, that's pretty standard for electric motors. It's two twenty. All right. It comes through here down to this air conditioning fuse box. Okay. I ripped the cover off so I could get easy access to this thing. Turn it on and off. See? It's just like a mini fuse box. And that's welded to a couple of brackets that just hold it on to the, to the uh, head. <clears throat> so, this thing is set up on a hinge. So it uses its own weight pushing down to make tension. Tension on the belt. And look, it's got play. There's plenty of play. So, this thing barks on. It immediately grabs and goes, and then this 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 thing here, half inch by 52 inches. You know, it could be whatever. It's just pretty close because you can lift this motor up this way. It loosens the belt. I mean, and I could get a slightly different size, and it would just it would just work because it it's so it's self tensioning. So then I just got a couple cable ties holding this thing down over a little wooden block okay and that that's enough that thing stays there you know and if it were to come loose what would it matter it's going to put a little more tension on that belt that's the only thing it can do because it's pulling itself down all right so <clears throat> let's see what am i forgetting here we got the the tent the the blade tension and that's just a bracket and a gear puller pulling against the bracket. The bracket's welded to the frame, like I said in the other video, and the gear puller is not attached to the frame. It's attached to the sliding uh, bracket. This, I don't know. It's another angle iron piece that sets right on the other. See that? And look, I take the this corner off. I, sand, I sanded this all off, grinded it off, and it fits snug in that little round pocket right there. So this thing slides left and right. And once you get it tight enough with the gear puller, take the tension off the gear puller by bolting it in these sliding uh, holes. So these slots aren't on the back. They stay stationary on the back. But in the front, this whole assembly slides. Okay? Giving you tension to your blade, which ain't a whole lot. I mean, look at that. Don't, those industrial ones take a lot of pressure, not these ones. Now this right here is, I got this off of some other dude. It's a cutting board screwed into a little piece of steel. And it's at the top of your other bracket that holds your bearings. All right, And this takes the vibration out of the top of the blade. Because if you don't have something like this, the, thing, the whole damn thing's going to be going up and down, up and down the whole time. It's so annoying because <clears throat> I've done it without it. All right, so these these things here, my bearing, ugly, ugly bearing holding brackets, they slide left to right. This one does because it's not the stationary one. And I can reclamp it wherever I want. And does that work? Hell yeah, it works. <clears throat> and, and that damn clamp holds it on tight. It's never, ever moved. Okay, so don't discount the power of a clamp. This thing hangs over the edge of the angle iron. All right? It's kind of tricky getting it in there the first time. But it it has this little piece that goes down this way. And it's just it's just hooking over the edge of this. And then you put tension on it to hold it in place. That's why we have this. All right, so that thing moves left to right, and this one's stationary, okay? And this one's not finished. This is a new one I'm working on. Normally, you'd see another bearing on top, bearing on bottom, and uh, it would keep those only just 
keep it from moving up and down like this and actually help with the vibration too. Just like on this side, look, you got one on top, one on bottom, one in the back. And are these anything special? Hell no. No, they're not. Don't let anybody fool you. These ones for the wheel, they are special. These ones down here, ain't shit. Okay, so that's just one bracket welded onto another bracket that's clamped onto this sucker. I got that clamp in a nice tight little spot. Has it ever moved? No. But eventually I'll take that out and put a weld down through here. Easy. Real easy. Maybe I'll even put a bolt through. Doesn't matter to me. Things never ever came apart. So on this bracket, you get it where you want. Bolt it in. Put some lock washers on it. It's stationary. Ain't going anywhere. So the whole premise is that this wheel is stationary. This bracket is stationary. This bracket is adjustable. I can open it up, I think, to a 20, 28 inch cut, maybe. And this moves. So this moves and this moves, and all this stuff on the right stays in place. Now, the reason for that is because your dogs are lined up perfectly with the edge of this. This is the same. Boom. All the way down. I have four of these running up a, a what is it? A 20 foot track. This is a 20 foot track, and there's four of these dogs. Okay? <clears throat> so, when you pull this wheel to the left, you get tension to the blade. This keeps it in place, takes the vibration out. Uh, Five horsepower electric motor has a lot more torque than an engine that has five horsepower. So, actually, this thing's probably worth more like 11 horsepower. It runs off of, fall it down here to a big old pile of wire. See it being crushed by the piece of drywall? That is 85 feet of 8 gauge wire. Okay? I don't know what numbers you want to get off of this or what, but but basically, it's just a big old wire. It's got three three wires inside of it, and uh, nothing special. I mean, it did cost a bit of money because copper is not cheap. And I can run you through uh, a lot of prices on this stuff. Like, I think these wheels, for both of them together, were 90 bucks. Okay? And then uh, those pulleys back there are for free. You can find a lot of this stuff for free. And some, of, like some of these ratios, they could be anything, just as long as they're close. All right. Like this is scrap. I bought these. I bought this. I don't know how much these were. Shit. Uh, I mean, I, my father-in-law gave me those pulleys. These brackets came off the kid's bike. You know what I mean? Like. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make this thing. This is a boat crank. The thing was 19 bucks. It can lift 600 pounds. So I run this back to this wire right here to a dryer outlet. And that, that cord back there, you can't see it, but it actually has a dryer end on it. You can get it out at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. Let's see if I can get it out for you. <clears throat> Nothing special, people. Nothing special. And have I ever blown a fuse? Hell no. Does that thing cut like a motherfucker? Yes, it does. Never had a problem with it. Never had a fire. Never got shocked. Everything works just fine. So, take your life into your own hands. But as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty, pretty safe for me.